In this example, we're going to be looking at the embedding PHP and HTML file that's in your scripting basics folder and embedding PHP. Now you can see here, we just have a very simple example, creating some boxes here. I'll show you how that works and how to embed things. And we'll take a look at having HTML on the page and also without HTML, just having the server side code. Well, on the server side, if we look at the welcome file, and that's in getting started, welcome.php, you can see here that we just have two lines here. Now, this first line, this is actually printing out that page. Like I mentioned, each page or most of the pages there have the actual page at the very, very top that you can just copy and paste and put up here on the address line here. That way you can get directly to that particular file. You don't have to worry about the framed environment here if you want to see what the values are on the query string, for example. Well, if we look at this file, this first one, welcome.php, we go back here and we select that. You see that we have two lines here, this and this. Well, that's embedding PHP, but it's not in HTML, it's just in a page. This is all that's in this text file. It's a PHP file here, a PHP extension. It could very well be .txt. When we put .php, we're instructing the web server that has special instructions for .php. It could be .asp, it could be .aspx. Well, that server knows that this is special instruction. It knows that that is PHP code, so it's going to parse it and execute it. Well, the first thing, it has question mark, PHP, and that's just how you get things started. That's how you separate the block of code. And then it has anything in between. It could be multiple lines. We'll see lots of code. This is just one line. And then you close it with the question mark and the greater than sign. And in order to actually echo something out, print it out, you could use the echo or the print command. We'll see those later as well. But this is just going to actually create some HTML here. You see, we have a BR tag for a new line, and then we just put some text. Not much HTML, but you get the idea. And it's all within quotes. We'll explain that as well. Well, that's how you get that to come out. Just text, not embedded in HTML. Well, embedding PHP in HTML, you can see here we have more structure. So we have more HTML code in there. And then we just place our PHP, we sprinkle it in where we need to. It could be as simple as text, it could be formatted text, and whoops, we can't select that. Well, that's an image. It can actually be an image, HTML code, whatever. It could be a poll in the corner for users to poll to a particular question or something like that. And it could be many different things. So we'll take a look at that file. And that is going to be the embedding file in your scripting basics. There you go. All right, so we have stuff at the top. I call it stuff, but it's scripting code. You notice that we have our less than sign and question mark and then PHP. That's how you start off getting the web server to understand that this is PHP. If it was ASP, you would need the opening percent, for example, and then the closing percent. And then the web server might interpret that as ASP if it's set up for ASP. We're set up for PHP, so we need to do it this way. This will become more clear as we work with more PHP. That's just how you do it. And then here you see it has multiple lines. And you can put multiple sections here. So that's important to note. Multiple sections, but everything has to have an opening and closing set of symbols here. And this is just commented code. This is just human readable. But this all exists at the top of the page. It's not dealing with HTML yet. Well, then when you deal with a straight HTML page, oftentimes your first line is the document type which defines what type of HTML document you're working with or XML document. Then you have your opening HTML tag, header information, the body tag, and then we're getting into the nitty gritty of HTML. So it's straight HTML. Well, if we go to design view, all right, so we see these little PHP things here, these little yellow symbols, and then we see what looks like an image that wasn't done correctly or it isn't located within Dreamweaver. Well, that is just a way that I did things. I'll explain that as well. And you can see we have nothing here. Doesn't look like there's any PHP here. Let's look at the first example. It's all going to become very, very clear. 
And we're also taking the first steps into actually creating dynamic HTML. And we'll talk about that when we talk about that image. Well, here you go. We sprinkled the PHP inside our HTML. So we have all this text up here. And then when this file is read from the top down, when it's read from the top down by the parser of the web server, it gets to this line and says, okay, this is server side. It's reading all of this stuff, but it's ignoring it because it's just HTML. And then it gets to this PHP code, which is executed on the server first. So it stops, executes this, and then continues to parse. And it fills this in with text. So it replaces this like a template with text before it sends it to the browser. And you can see we do some print command. If you know anything about programming, print usually just outputs something. It's just going to print it in this little area here. And then it prints that text. That's all. And then if we continue, we can go down to the second example. And we see that we have a class on the outside. CSS styling. So that text is printed in the middle, as you can see. And don't forget, if you have an open tag, you have to have a closed tag. Notice that this is separating it. So it's really treating it like this is a program. This little area is a program, so to speak. And everything else is just HTML text. You can do this with a text file. You can do it with an XML file, whatever you want to. This is how it works. No big deal. So if you, if you want to return HTML, you're returning HTML this way. But if you want to return XML, then you're returning XML that way. You're doing it in, an, in another way, but still returning XML. If you needed to send that back to Flash, for example. As long as you have that .php extension, everything is good. So we go down a little bit further and just see. Now the image tag with the source attribute here. This is expecting a file name. Well, just to make it a little bit tricky, no big deal. We put within quotes, outside those quotes for the HTML, we put in an image name. So you can put something dynamic. You can actually put something that's not accessible directly by the web server, for example, or you could actually return a whole image if you wanted to. You can do so many different things. But as long as you're parsing HTML, you want to actually display this using straight HTML. So you want to find a source for your image. So this could be a lot more complicated, but you get the idea. So this is on the road to dynamic HTML. It really is all dynamic, but it's really getting closer and closer to what we're going to be winding up as we move through the many sections. Well, here's just another way to do it. You notice we didn't have that PHP symbol there, but we actually have to use the script tag here, like you would with using JavaScript, for example. And you can see we actually put the language here as PHP. So we have an opening script tag, specify that language, and then we have a closing script tag. And in between, we can put as much PHP as we want. You'll also note that we can put this on multiple lines or any of this on multiple lines. You'll see that, we'll do it a lot, and it's quite normal. So here we're just printing this out again. Quotes, anything that's quoted inside this PHP area here, the scripting area, it's not really counting on anything outside of that. It's only counting on itself. It's like an isolated little program. So this particular script really has three or four little programs that are put together. Really, they're three or four scripting sections. And that's how you do it. And you can make changes to that, but that's how you would embed PHP in HTML. The key thing to remember is that it's not a .html file. It's a .php file. That's important. If you made it .html, all that code would actually be, it wouldn't be parsed correctly. It would bring back errors and that code would also be visible because the server side wouldn't process it. It would just pass it right back to the browser client because after this gets parsed and executed on the server, those templates get replaced with actual code or actual whatever you want. Then that finished page is actually passed back to the browser client. So keep that in mind. We'll see a lot of that too as well.